Chef Brad from Backcountry Chefs. So we're going to do a fish recipe today. Uh, I was in the Boundary Waters of Northern Minnesota a couple months ago, caught some great walleyes. And we're going to do a tried and true uh, presentation that, that reminds me of my childhood. So we're going to do German potato salad. We're going to update this though into an Oktoberfest vinaigrette. So the German potato salad has a few steps. We're going to walk through each one. Very easy to make, but these few key components make it spectacular. The first is uh, a wilted cucumber that's going to get folded in. My gra great grandmother, uh, Grandma Tha, used to do this to her German potato salad. So you want two smallish cucumbers, peel them, don't have to be crazy about it. And you can do it by hand, but a Japanese mandolin makes quick work of this. About an eighth of an inch. Be, oops, be extremely careful. Super sharp blade when you get down near the end. I usually leave about an inch and eat it myself. Then these cucumbers, you're just gonna put a healthy dose of salt over them. About like that. Toss them and let them sit on the counter for about 20 minutes or half an hour. Then we're gonna squeeze out all the liquid and we're gonna lose about half the volume. And so you can see how much water is leached out of these cucumbers. Last bunch here. We'll squeeze them out. All right, so we're gonna finish the salad. Just as a side note, these in and of themselves, if you add a little bit of vinegar to them, are an incredible pickle garnish for sandwiches, burgers, or by itself. So we're gonna to wanna to use a waxy potato for this salad. Uh, these are Yukon Golds, Red Bliss, any small waxy potatoes, not baking potatoes are perfect for this. Just cover them with some cold water and a nice, handful, maybe two tablespoons of kosher salt. Bring this up to a giggle and let it giggle along for about 20 minutes until they're fork tender but not falling apart. Then we're going to let them cool a bit, peel them, and assemble the salad with the warm potatoes. All right, so here we've got six slices of bacon uh, cooked over medium heat in a nonstick pan just until it starts to render and it gets nice and crispy. Don't ever set a hot saute pan or saucepan on a cutting board. Always use a trivet or a towel. And then to this, leave the fat and everything in there. We're going to one, put in one slice of clove garlic, one, excuse me, one clove of garlic thinly sliced, quarter cup of white or yellow onion, and we really, really want the crunch to remain there, so we're not going to cook this for any amount of time over the burners. Just kind of let the residual heat soften the onion. We're going to add a little bit of mustard. This is grain mustard, German mustard, Dijon, whatever you have in your pantry is fine. A little bit of game stock or beef stock. And some white wine vinegar. Now I'm going to put this back in the stove, just bring everything up to temperature so it all kind of gets to know each other really well, and then we're going to pour it over the potatoes. Or a little bit of fresh ground pepper. So the potatoes were cooked for about 20 minutes. They're just, just tender. See, it goes in quite easily. These have already been peeled and sliced. I'll just show you how easy this is. The rubber gloves help. You really do want to peel them when they're still warm because when we assemble the dressing over the warm potatoes, it just soaks in and tastes really delicious. So just slice them unevenly like this. Okay, so we're going to put the wilted cucumbers over the potatoes here. And then this vinaigrette, which is just come to a gentle boil. And we'll stir everything. Let this sit on the counter for at least half an hour so all these juices can get absorbed into the potatoes. And at that point, you're going to want to taste for salt and pepper. Salt should be okay if. The bacon's usually pretty salty and there's some resi residual salt in the cucumbers. But check for pepper. Now this is absolutely divine. It's one of my favorite things to eat. Best eaten on the day, but the next morning, 
sauteed uh, in a nonstick pan with some fried eggs on top is incredible as well. It's great at 2 o'clock in the morning right out of the fridge cold also. We'll let this sit and then we're going to cook our fish. So for the Oktoberfest vinaigrette, take a bottle of your favorite Oktoberfest, put it in a small sauce pot, about a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, and a tablespoon of your favorite honey. Now we're going to cook, simmer this, you know, cook it over medium heat, watch so it doesn't boil over until it reduces down to a syrup. So, the way I love to cook fish is on my grill with a hot pan, and that way I can get the pan really hot, doesn't smell up the house, doesn't splatter on the stove. So here we have 500 degrees, all burners on. I like to use grapeseed oil or pure olive oil, something with a high smoke point. So nice bit of oil on there. Heavily seasoned fish, this is freshwater fish, so there's no saltiness to it. So you have to season it heavily with salt and black pepper. Butter. And this is going to take about two minutes on this side, flip it over, take it out the heat, we're done. It's nice and opaque around the edges, still a little rare right there. We're going to flip it over, let it sit for about 30 seconds, and then we're done. plate this. So here we have our German potato salad. Take one of our walleye fillets. So I took that Oktoberfest, that's the reduction. I, I poured a little bit of walnut oil over the top. It's nice and sour. A nice light vinaigrette. fresh parsley. I'm Chef Eric, the other half of the Backcountry Chefs. Thanks, Brad, for your awesome recipe from your Northern Minnesota walleye catch. This is just a small sample of the great content we have planned for you. Hunting season is about to kick off, so we plan on bringing you along for the hunt, sharing our meals and our cooking hacks while in camp, and of course, our creations from the harvest throughout the year. If you enjoyed this video, please like, smash that subscribe button, and share with your friends. We can't wait to see you next time on the Backcountry Chefs.